Hi everyone, welcome back. Thank you for watching me and for supporting my channel by subscribing and sharing my videos with your friends and family. Many of us have been following a very dark experiment that is the Nigerian e-Naira, along with the crisis, the lack of cash in the country, as well as its recent presidential elections. In this video, I want to focus on the financial aspect of the issues in the context of digital transformations. The news from Nigeria have been both heartbreaking and concerning, extremely concerning. People were told to turn in high denominated banknotes to their banks and were promised new bills. And of course, those never came. ATM and over-the-counter withdrawals have been limited, but that's if you're lucky. Many wait in lines for hours only to be told that there is no cash left. The limit on ATM withdrawals was announced in the beginning of December 2022, so not too long ago. And as you can see, it did not take long for this catastrophic situation to unfold. This new policy affected more than 200 million people. This phasing out of physical cash goes hand in hand with a push to encourage adoption of the country's CBDC. The adoption of e-Naira was expected to be relatively smooth because Nigerians have been actively using Bitcoin. And so just based on that fact, it was expected that there would be little to no issues with them just switching over to the new CBDC. Of course, there is a significant difference between the two and it did not go unnoticed. Noticed. Nigerians want nothing to do with the digital currency. In my opinion, it's important to understand the context for this monetary experiment, and that's what I want to share with you in this video. Nigeria is Africa's largest economy. The country has been suffering from poverty. According to World Bank, 4 in 10 Nigerians live below the national poverty line. The World Bank's report, and by the way, I will leave the link to it in the description below if you want to do your homework, it further noted that jobs do not translate Nigerians' hard work into an exit from poverty. Shockingly, just 17% of Nigerian workers who hold wage jobs, who have jobs, are able to live outside of what is considered poverty. Now, having said that, only a little more than half of the country's population has bank accounts, which in practice means that the majority of transactions have been cash-based or with the younger generation switching over to Bitcoin, of course, crypto-based. This is why the Central Bank of Nigeria said, there is no turning back on cashless policy. We cannot continue to allow a situation where over 85% of cash that is in circulation is outside the banks. So loud and clear, comment below, let me know what your thoughts on that are. With that said, and this is a very, very important fact that should not be ignored, Nigeria has extremely rich natural resources. There's oil and there's natural gas. There are multiple parallels that we may be able to draw here with other countries that are rich in resources that have been destabilized to the point of collapse, but that is a topic for another video. The World Bank concluded its report on Nigeria by indicating that Nigeria has to undergo three types of what it referred to as deep, long-lasting major reforms, the first type of which being a fiscal transformation. The World Bank published this report in March of 2022, just short six months following the extremely unsuccessful launch of the e-Naira. The CBDC was launched in November of 2021. The report was clearly published to push forward the digital currency that proved to be quite unpopular. Still, Nigerians didn't want to switch from cash and Bitcoin over to e-Naira. So the government kept cash withdrawals in order to drive adoption of its CBDC. My subscribers might recall that in one of my recent videos, we talked about the CBDC in China having an expiration date, which was implemented after consumers showed very little interest in switching over to the digital yuan, and I will link that video below. Inaira was initially presented as a way for those without bank accounts to get access to banking, but the head of research at SBM Intelligence, a socioeconomic research firm, believes that the policy will hurt those that it is supposed to benefit the most and encourage the hoarding of cash. The new policy, while hailed as a path to increased adoption of cashless transactions, is likely to turn off customers from utilizing formal banking structures. 
Removing cash from the economy by tricking citizens into handing over cash to banks is not the first time that it happened in history, by the way. In 2016, high-value bills were demonetized in India. So the goal is the same, it is to make much more difficult for people to use cash, leaving them no options. As a result of this new reality, many businesses in Nigeria have closed as their products or their services are no longer in demand since consumers have little to no cash. Some businesses actually refused to accept old cash and were forced to shut down as well. People can't afford to cover medical bills because they're either not allowed to use their cash deposits, they simply can't take the money out, or they're well below the poverty line and have no money to begin with. While the introduction of Inaira and encouraging a cashless society was presented as a way to help shrink the unbanked population, in reality, it will also help increase the government's tax revenues by essentially enforcing compliance. Given that cash-based transactions are easier to use for tax evasion, individual taxpayers and businesses who do use the digital currency will have those transactions recorded within the digital ledger that is, of course, the property of the currency's issuer or the central bank. So with CBDCs being traceable and programmable, of course, enforcement of tax compliance, among other things, would become much easier. At this time, close to 90% of the world's central banks are at some point in the process of creating their own digital currency. 10% of them have already launched their CBDCs. The United States and Canada are launching pilot programs in partnerships with the biggest financial institutions. Just a week ago, Representative Emmer introduced a bill that would prohibit the Federal Reserve from issuing its uh, own CBDC, the digital dollar. So we have yet to see if that bill will get any traction. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are, whether it will be popular. When it comes to reducing or banning certain banknotes, there have been calls in the United States to ban the $100 bill. The Chicago Fed recently said that about 80% of all $100 bills are held abroad. If you enjoyed this video, you may want to watch another recent video that I posted on this topic. I will leave it in the video description below. That's it for today. I will upload an update in a couple of days. So if you want to know what's going on, remember to subscribe to my channel here and on Rumble. My content on Rumble has a bit more detailed information. Stay in touch, share this video with your network, and I will see you in my next one soon. Take care.